All right, so now I have this, these really cool, uh, this really cool colored reptilian information. I'm going to use the, the hard edged eraser at 100%. Or I'm sorry, the soft edged eraser at 100%. Get rid of the hard edges. Because those will come back and bug you if you don't. I'm not going to worry about the outside edge all that much yet. So even though these, these scales are really, really sharp and defined, I'm still getting rid of just the pixel hard edge that was created by my lasso. So that then I can go in more selectively. And I might warp and kind of push and pull the shapes a little bit more. It's like dough. If I want a little bit more of an arc, I have control of that. I'm going to take the opacity down and see how that lines up with the eye. And then I can start erasing away, letting these kind of horns come through. Take the opacity back up. And now I'll go to a lower opacity. And start blending. Tablet's really helpful here, so I'll, I'll keep some of these veins of yellow, but in order for them to be a lot more useful as focal points, I have to tone it down in a lot of the areas. Let it merge with the other colors I have. But I like the ridges above the eyes being that strong yellow. And that's why I wanted a little bit of it on the snout. But I get to tone that down by erasing at a lower opacity, letting the other colors come through. And I also still want the teeth. So remember, upper jaws are different than lower jaws. And I want these kind of snaggle teeth coming out. So we really get to make our own rules here, where everything comes together. And we are transforming it. It's definitely its own creature. Like I don't know where one ends and the other begins, if I do this correctly. You also don't need to worry so much about dodging and burning if you're blending in the shadows as you go, because you're naturally making decisions that work with the lighting. And of course, we could play with the color balance. I think I will hit that at the end. And you want as much overlap as you can handle on these heads. So I'm going to have an eye within an eye. I 
because I'm always going to try to err towards having more lighting. And that gives it more versatility in different backgrounds. Okay, all this erasing can take the computer a while to process, especially low opacity erasing and knowing what pixels to show you. So it's a good idea to save your work and it's no longer going to be saved as a sketch. It's now my project. So I'm going to save as just assignment two as a PSD to the desktop. I probably should have given it some description. So let me do that again. It's pretty fast at saving the PSDs. I just have to wait till it finishes. But I always include my name. And I'll put assignment two, but then also a description. Because what if I'm working on another assignment for another class? So creature collage. So now, now I just made a second PSD. All right, and I'll get rid of that first. Okay, so now I have the bones to a good head. I might do something with this upper ridge. So let me just do the last little touch on the head. I'm gonna take this reference. And that's using four references already, just on one head design. Okay, quite a bit of overlap here. Duplicate it, turn off the smart layer underneath. It's like adding a, a bill. Transform it, kind of layer it underneath. Yeah, I like that lighting a little bit better. Let's warp it, push it in. I like that little pink of the lip. You can expand on that. And you get to make it the shape you want as well. And now I'm going to blend this in. Now because it's a lower opacity, because very few of the hard edges are showing, I just make sure I go over it enough times that that hard edge disappears where I don't want it. blend in those edges. Okay, why I like this reference is now I can just go an image adjustment and do a color balance and push it more towards yellow because I could see there was more color there. Take the highlights, push them more towards red. Take the shadows, push them more towards cyan. Yeah, I don't want to go green. So some reference is, is just more effective, more useful than other. And you have the, the ability to change it. So at least in the head, I want it to be a focal point, so I'm going to go towards color. And then I can do the levels adjustment and get that lighting where I want it. All right, so last thing, and then Reggie, I saw your hand up, so I'll come check it out. Now that I have pretty much the components, I'm still going to have to do some finishing work with clone stamp and stuff to get that all to work, and I'll have to cut it out. But now that I've got the finishing components of the head, I want to bring all those layers together in the order that they, they are, because the order matters, right? If I move a layer up, it will change it. So I get all the, the layers that are turned on that are being used for the head. I move them all up to the top. And then I select them all by holding down shift. So all these head layers are gray. And now instead of making a new layer, I'm going to use the icon next to it, which is a new folder. And this will create a, a grouping 
of all these head layers. It still keeps them as separate layers, but it allows me to turn them off or on. I'm going to call it the head group. Right? This is the assembly line model. And then what's great is I can use the move tool and auto select by group and move this whole thing. And then even when it's ready to bolt it on, I can even transform and manipulate this whole layer together. It won't let me warp it because there are multiple layers and still be able to adjust individual layers on it. All right. So it's good to have that capability. But for now, I'm going to keep it off to the side. Right? So I know what my head is doing now. And that's a good time to save it. All right, now I go to my next reference. And I'm really interested in the back and how it goes into the head connects. I don't have ears yet, so I'll have to find something for that as well. So I'm going to place it, bring this on, move it off to the side. Big enough to go with my, that head, right? I can even move it underneath my my head group. Oops. Accidentally put it in my head group. Move it well underneath the head group, so when I move it, I can kind of see. Okay, yeah, that's about the right size. Now this one. This is for kind of the roundness of the rib cage. If I need it, this might go underneath. And for, yeah, that joint for the arm, that works pretty well. Okay, let me pause. So these are the only two references I have for the torso so far. After this, I'm going to need to get some more reference. But let me just go through how I would do that. So this is kind of the underneath structure, and it goes into the angle of the neck that I like. So I want to get a lot of overlap there. A rough cutout. I don't need this arm but I'll use some of that overlap. And then I duplicate it and turn off the layer behind. Now for this, I want all those horns and spikes. And I definitely want the collarbone and the joints and the fingers, all of that to build up on. I don't need those back legs. This is more like a little frill that I'm adding on. So I'm going to duplicate that, turn off the smart layer underneath, move one layer on top of the other, turn down the opacity, start blending these. And I want to have them make sense structurally before I attempt to merge them with the head or put them onto the sketch. And it has to do a lot with just understanding where the anatomy starts and stops. Not getting too ahead of yourself. All right. Okay, now that's very bright, so I'm going to go to Image Adjustment Levels. I'm going to darken the midtones. I'm going to limit the highlights. All right. but that still makes it really saturated. So I'm going to go to Image Adjustment uh, Hue Saturation. I'm going to take down a little bit of the intensity of the color. Not that much. About there. Then I'm going to go to Color Balance. And this is a lot of yellow. Again, that's about the lighting of the photograph. 
more than about the creature itself. And we want something that's kind of true to what the creature looks like and perfect.